There's an ever-expanding list of new games to play all the time, but something I've grown to appreciate about New Game Plus is revisiting games I've played previously with a brand new perspective. Some games hold up better than I thought they would, and some are way more of a chore to complete again than I assumed. I enjoy what I played of Far Cry 3 the first time I tackled it for my channel, but re-completing this iconic game turned out to be much more of a challenge than I would have imagined. The game is fun, but you'll see how too much of a good thing can make an exciting experience turn boring when I re-complete Far Cry 3. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Completionist New Game Plus, a show where I'm re-completing the first 120 episodes I ever featured here on the show. I'm doing something a little bit different today, and actually completing a game for New Game Plus that I didn't complete originally the first time I played it. Now let me explain. Anyone remember a little show I made called Here Comes New Challenger? It's a show where we tried to put on, in the essence of, I could give a brief review on new games without doing the whole completing thing. Yeah, it turned out that the fans of the show seemed to really want me to actually complete games, and it didn't work out. Shocker. So today, I'm gonna complete Far Cry 3, because I never want to go back on a promise. Starting 2020 off the right way. Yo, what about completing Persona 5? Shut up! That? Shut up! I'm getting there, Frazier! Persona 5. No! Persona 5. This is Persona 4 Golden for the PS Vita. I'm getting there, guys! Yes. Now, I may not have 100% completed Far Cry 3 the first time I played it for the channel, but I came damn near close, and I really enjoyed what I played. But I wasn't expecting fully completing this game to be as big of a challenge as it ended up being. Far Cry 3, at first glance, is a big old platter of completionist comfort food. It's enjoyable, but after a point, it starts to feel like work to put down. Far Cry 3 might be one of the most influential games ever made. I originally played this first-person action game way back in 2012 on a PS3, and noticed right away that Far Cry 3 went to a very different direction than the previous two Far Cry games ever did. The first Far Cry had way more sci-fi action, and the second brought grit and intricate systems to mess around. The third game in the franchise still kept the same basic structure of being a first-person shooter with unique and responsive systems to play around with, but kept the action grounded and mostly believable. It's all about survival in a harsh world, which means killing enemies, driving vehicles, and exploring the island to its fullest. The game also introduced the greatest villain in Far Cry history. Far Cry 3 was a big deal at the time and was popular enough to get a re-release on modern consoles just a few years ago. First time I played the game was on the PS3, but this time I played the Far Cry 3 Classic Edition on Xbox One. Being able to play an influential game on a more modern console, folks? Huge plays. Huge plays right here. So I originally thought the story of Far Cry 3 was really strong, and I still think it starts off that way. The beginning of the game is absolutely harrowing. Main character Jason Brody, the broiest of bros out there, is having the time of his life on a tropical vacation near the fictional Rook Island with his friends and family. Unfortunately, the fun comes to a swift end when homeboy and pals get kidnapped by Madman Voss and his army of brutal murderers. After his brother is killed right in front of him, Jason escapes and is almost almost immediately deputized into a war. It's kill or be killed. And Jason realizes what he must become in order to save those closest to him. Now look, the hook is strong and made jumping back into yet another open world action adventure game not so bad at first. This is the game that solidified what I think of as the modern Ubisoft house style. Skill trees, yup. Towers that detail parts of the map once they're climbed, right here. Outposts full of dangerous enemies that you can Rambo out of existence, either stealthily or explosively. You bet. Lots of wild animals to murder, skin, and turn into ammo pouches. Yup. It's all here, and just as well done as I remember. Essentially, Far Cry 3 is revered for a few different things. One, establishing what would become the Ubisoft model for open world games. Two, a gorgeous world that is harsh and hostile that actually takes some efforts to master. And three, some really incredible characterization and performances, most notably with the villain, Voss. This charismatic killer made a big impression on me when I first played, and I still think Hands down, he is the best part of the game. Now, as I said before, I never actually completed this game on Here Comes New Challenger, but I gave it a rating of buy it. I made it all the way through the story and saw both endings, but only did about 
70 to 80% of the actual completion process. And I'm rectifying that today. From what I remember, this game isn't all that hard. There's just a lot to do. There's a lot of it. And even though there aren't any real difficulty-based achievements, I'm gonna crank this bad boy up to its hardest difficulty because that's the kind of masochist that I am. Call it a late Christmas present or whatever you want. Like the comfort food of youth, Far Cry 3 doesn't feel especially nourishing after returning to it for an extended period of time. Now don't get me wrong, the game is still really fun and I appreciate what it did for the series, but completing Far Cry 3 is like trying to eat an entire lasagna by yourself. You can, but after a while it stops being enjoyable and there's no real point to it at the end of the day. I still think Far Cry 3 has one of the strongest openings of any game and an overall fantastic story. The game definitely starts on a high and has incredible incredible momentum at the beginning, especially since the villain who kicks off the whole adventure is so strong. Back in 2012, Voss the character marked a paradigm shift in video game baddies. He was so freaking scary, yet undeniably charismatic. This mo capped performance by Michael Mando is still incredibly fantastic. He's funny, he's creepy, he draws you right in until you're absolutely mesmerized. But this time around, I just feel frustrated because of how the story tosses Voss aside pretty unceremoniously. Now, I know we don't really do this anymore, but spoilers for an eight-year-old game. Voss gets killed halfway through the story, and it's pretty terrible. Nothing in the back half of this game matches the energy that Michael Mando brings to Voss. And without a compelling antagonist to carry the rest of the game, I had a harder time caring about the story. I thought it was a shame then, and now I found his untimely end even more tragic because all I wanted was more Voss. But even though the antagonist is awesome, something that carries over from the first time I played the game is that Jason Brody, the player character, kind of sucks. I get that he's the audience surrogate, the naive, inexperienced guy who gets thrown into an extraordinary and terrifying situation, but this time around, I really noticed some of the seams showing around his character. His wants and needs change too much by the end of the game, and the way he's written rubbed me the wrong way. Jason starts off pretty believable, but after dozens of hours, he's sort of a boring superhero. Maybe it could just be that this type of character feels a little played out to me. The trope of a fish out of water who gets adopted by a native people and learns their ways was kind of old. Even a years ago. Although I found some of the writing to be a little unsatisfying during most of my recent playthrough, the game overall is still pretty fulfilling. The combat is satisfying, visceral, and even thrilling. The first time I played the game, I was impressed by the lengths the game went to show how brutal the world was. Jason resets his own broken thumbs, digs bullets out of his arms, and skins animals with really mushy sound effects. And playing in HD, this felt even more powerful and I never got tired of it. I went into my most recent playthrough of this game thinking that since I had played Far Cry 3 before, that I wouldn't be that all surprised. But I was not prepared to get spanked like I did this time around. Playing on the hardest difficulty is definitely a challenge that put hair on my chest. Enemies are way more alert and dangerous and clearing out every single outpost felt way more brutal than my first playthrough. I loved the challenge and it helped to keep me engaged as the game stretched out in front of me. One great thing about playing on the hardest difficulty is that it made me play with every tool in my toolbox just to stay alive. I definitely experimented a little more with the syringes that give combat boosts and bonuses and that put a fresh layer on the game. Even though Far Cry 3 was much more difficult this time around, it felt good to take out enemy camps and turn them into my own safe houses. The stealth stuff in Far Cry 3 still feels great and using the bow to take out patrols from 100 feet away never grew old. Once I started maxing out Jason's skills and getting all tatted up like I was cosplaying Dwayne the Rock Johnson, I felt like a force to be reckoned with and that I could save Rook Island from any hostile forces. All this upgrading and skill mastering feels satisfying and good and I wish the game had given me more compelling reasons to check every box. I earned experience by hunting enemies and animals, finishing main story quests and side missions, and finding tons of collectibles. In the moment, it feels good, even though I've played a ton of games like this in the last several years. Since I wasn't focused on the full completion process my first time through, I missed out on a lot of this game, so it was cool to explore the areas I'd never been to before. The island really feels wild, and some of my favorite parts of the game were when I got completely blindsided by a tiger or a shark or something unexpected. My first impression of Far Cry 3 was that it reminded me of an even more brutal Uncharted, and I still think that's true. When Far Cry 3 lets its beautiful setting lull me to a false sense of security and then sends something crazy my way, I enjoyed it even more. 
Although I will say, Rook Island definitely looks better on the Xbox One than it ever did on the PS3, but I still encountered a good amount of bugs and glitches. What stuck out to me a little more during this playthrough was the stuff that would become refined in future Ubisoft games. Far Cry 3 has a ton of sharply written humor in menus and item descriptions, but I didn't feel like that carried over into the main characters or plot. There's a lot to love here, but it felt to me like this style of topical humor wouldn't be fully realized for a few years to come. It didn't exactly leave a bad taste in my mouth, but the writing for anyone who isn't Voss definitely felt a little bland to me, especially Jason and his friends. Every time we got a scene where we went back to the past to see what happened at the club, I almost was rooting for Voss and his homies to kidnap them. They're all just kind of douches. Another thing that could have used more time in the oven is anything remotely vehicle related. Driving cars and boats in Far Cry 3 is still a comical nightmare. They feel unwieldy, floaty, and incredibly difficult to control, and I probably died more times driving than from the actual combat of the game. So there are dozens of different collectibles scattered throughout Rook Island, and they're pretty much all right out in the open. The map is great and tells you where things are, so if you're playing this game as a completionist, you'll find it incredibly useful that everything is laid out right there in front of you. But that's both good and bad, because for a game that's all about mastering a hostile environment and learning to be in tune with your surroundings, the whole buffet is laid out right in front of you, which means there's not a lot of surprises here. What started to wear on me was just how much there was to do in this game. Since I didn't do every little thing the first time around, I didn't have to worry about clearing every enemy camp or hunting every single exotic animal to craft the best gear. Turns out that doing every single thing is kind of exhausting. I was surprised because I was really high on this game the first time around and was excited to finally put another notch on my completionist belt. But the middle section of this game, before you unlock every skill and great weapon, started to drag me down. I couldn't help but feel like other games of this type felt a little more rewarding all the way through. There's absolutely nothing wrong with enjoying some comfort food, folks. It's called that for a reason. But after a while, I want to sink my teeth into something more unique or freshly prepared. Far Cry 3 is a great snack, but I couldn't help but think about how certain systems would be improved in the future. As great as it felt to complete this game, Far Cry 3 doesn't really provide anything to mark the occasion. I took Jason Brody from whining, annoying frat boy to jungle dwelling murder machine, but the game itself doesn't really provide much incentive to find every collectible or fully upgrade the character outside of achievements. It takes a ton of experience points to unlock every skill in the three branches of the skill tree, but maxing out everything didn't really provide anything extra, which is kind of a shame. I guess the reward for unlocking every skill is just to have every skill in the game of course, but I wish there was still a little cherry on top to make things that much more sweeter. The rewards for finding collectibles are both satisfying and wildly frustrating. Collecting a certain amount of island relics or memory cards actually provided me with radical signature weapons. This felt amazing and like I was actually earning something for my efforts. Unfortunately, this also primed me to expect something for finding every collectible, and that is absolutely not the case here. There aren't even any achievements to unlock for finding every single relic. This is exactly the wrong way to treat a completionist. There is one little nod to completionists that was at least something. Finding every single relic and unlocking every single skill point puts a small finishing touch on Jason's arm tattoo. That's it. I wish there had been a more tangible in-game reward, but it's better than nothing. I think that's the new catchphrase for this year. A completionist. It's better than nothing. I like their multiple endings, and something I appreciate is that I was able to experience them in the same playthrough by just simply reloading my save, rather than having to play the entire game twice. Far Cry 3 has set up a good ending and a bad ending, though to me, they both feel like bad endings. Jason is clearly going to have PTSD for the rest of his life, and probably won't be able to return to society no matter how many times he uses one of those therapy apps. Sorry, bro. Overall, it isn't all that hard to get every achievement in Far Cry 3, and to make it to the very end of the story at the very least. But finding every collectible started to feel pretty punishing by the end. When I recompleted slash actually completed Far Cry 3 for the first time, there were 54 skill points earned, which transformed Jason from party boy to predator. 34 outposts liberated, by which I mean I liberated a lot of blood from my enemies. 43 achievements earned, which isn't also that many considering how long this game is. 160 collectibles found, including 20 memory cards, 20 letters, and 120 relics. 46 deaths, most of which were from my bad driving or flying abilities. 48 hours of total playtime, which is a lot more than I expected. And 
One excellent villain who is sidelined tragically, but who lives on as one of the all-time greats. This is a guy that I loved to hate. Far Cry 3 is the most influential Far Cry game. It basically defined what Ubisoft's open world games look like these days, and I'm glad I finally got around to completing it. It's got an entertaining story, a fantastic villain, and a wonderful setting with stealth gameplay that blends everything great in with these more action-packed moments. As far as completion goes though, to me it felt too much like doing too much for a little reward, especially collecting all 120 relics. If you play this game, save yourself the pain and do not worry about completing every little thing the game has to offer. So, with that in mind guys, I give this game my completionist rating of finish it. Finish it. That's all the time we have for today, guys. So please, as always, let me know what you think about the show somewhere on the internet. Let me know in the comments down below, on Reddit, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, whatever. Uh, guys, happy new year. Let's take 2020 to the limit. I've enjoyed The Completionist, and I'll see you next week for another brand new episode. Bye bye <laughs> <laughs>